So for this video, I'm going to be going over our new DIY controllers. How to install them and uh, kind of going over how they work, showing you some of the animations and some of the features that our controllers have. So these controllers are designed to work with uh, any of our 5 volt RGBW addressable LEDs. Uh, they will work with uh, any of our SK6812 RGBW halos or strips, as well as our SK6805 uh, side emitting LEDs. Um, there are two variations. We have the headlight version and we have the taillight version. Uh, the differences between the two is that the headlight version has a white DRL and sequential turn signals. The taillight version has a red DRL, sequential turn signals, a white reverse, and a red brake light. Uh, both of them have animations on uh, the DRLs, the turn signals. The taillight version has animations on the brake light as well uh, with the strobe function. Uh, no animations on the reverse light. So, as far as actually hooking them up goes, uh, where is the... they both will come with our inverter. Uh, so this is a 5 volt 10 amp inverter, and it has power and ground that will go directly to the battery. It also has an inline fuse, so this can be changed out uh, in the event that it blows. It's a nice little protection to make sure that you don't accidentally fry your halos. They also come with instruction book with an extra fuse, just in case you need that fuse. And this same inverter uh, pack will work with both. Uh, so you will get it uh, with either one, regardless of which one you order, it is included. Uh, the way that it works, it just plugs right into your five pin. So it's a five pin plug from the inverter and a five pin plug on the DRL driver, whichever one you're going for. Uh, I'm gonna show you the headlight version first because it's a little bit more basic. Uh, that's why it's only $90. So it just plugs in right like that and that'll send all the power that it needs to directly to the controller itself. There are four outputs already on the controller. Uh, you can see they're easily discernible as to which is which. You have a right and a left. As far as expansion goes, if you decide that uh, you need, maybe you're going to run three sets of halos or you know you want, you want more outputs than just the four that are included, two to each light, we do have extensions or uh, splitters available. Uh, they are $5 per pair, so you'd get uh, two of them four or five dollars and they're very simple in the way that they work they just plug right in to one of the ends and they can convert a four plug into a six plug controller obviously you'll have to get the number of them that you need depending on how many halos or devices that you're planning on running uh, with splitters this controller will still work if you want to run your devices in line. Uh, that's a little more complicated to do it that way. Uh, but if you are familiar with uh, the way uh, how to add an output to a halo or something like that, you can do that with this controller and it will work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug this up so that we can see it in action. Alright, so now we got the uh, halo hooked up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how the DRL function. Uh, currently, I only have the DRL wire uh, plugged up. So you see, they just go solid white. So uh, that would be the normal DRL function. In the event that you want to add the animation, uh, you would just run both wires to your DRL. And there's your startup animation. Now that will happen every time you start the car. Uh, when you turn off the car, it just turns off, just like so. Uh, so there's not a reverse animation. Uh, it's just the, uh, the the main startup animation. As far as your turn signals go,
they are sequential. Uh, and obviously, the, uh, there's there's several ways to do this. You can use the splitters, which is a much more simple way to do it. Uh, the way I would recommend uh, if you were if you're looking for a quick build, something easy, simple. Uh, just use splitters in the event that you want more than uh, one set of halos. But if you're going to use multiples, you can use the output uh, pads on the back of the halos to solder on outputs and to run from one halo to the next, to the next, to the next. Uh, once again, if you're looking for a quick, easy install, I wouldn't do that. I would just use the splitters. Um, or, you know, in this case, you can run up to four halos on this. But uh, that would be your turn signal function. On the turn signal turns off. It goes right back to your white. Uh, turn off your car. It goes right like that. And then you have the actual app itself, which has several hundred animation modes um, for showing off the car, uh, showing off your headlights, at car shows, meets, or anything like that. Uh, generally, uh, not something you want to be doing on the street, obviously. Um, but uh, at car shows and stuff like that, you know, great time to show it off. Great time to, you know, uh, try to draw some attention, track some attention to your car. It'll definitely do that. Uh, but then when you go right back, uh, one nice feature. So I got it on show mode right now. When I hit the DRLs, it overpowers the show modes. So let's say you accidentally forgot that you had the show modes on. Fortunately, uh, if you start driving down the road, your DRLs will overpower the show modes, as well as your turn signals. And when you go to park, uh, you may look back at your car and notice that you've got your uh, animations going. If that's the case, yeah, yeah. At least you can rest assured that it wasn't running while you're driving down the road. So that is a nice feature that it does overpower that. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off and I'll go ahead and hook up the taillight version next. So here is the taillight version. Uh, I've got it plugged up to uh, the same two halos. Uh, once again, RGBW only. These are not compatible with the RGB um, uh, of our RGB LEDs. Uh, so I've got the basic DRL function. It is a red uh, LED being that it is a taillight. Um, and then your turn signal function. And it will go right back to red. In the event that you want the startup animation, you will just run that startup mode wire to your DRL. And that will do your startup animation. Once you turn that off, it does just go right off. There is no reverse startup animation on that. For the brake, it does three strobe off, three strobe off, and then full uh, on for your brake. So it will catch attention pretty well on the road, uh, you know, hopefully preventing any kind of rear end collision. Uh, and then the last part is, oh, sorry, wrong wire, there it is, the reverse. Uh, obviously a very important feature to have on the back of your car, so uh, the reverse is also included in the taillight driver kit. Um, so, can uh, I give you an example? talking about multiple halos and stuff. So let's say I've got uh, got a bunch of halos here. I'm going to go ahead and hook up uh, eight halos using splitters to just kind of show you uh, kind of the versatility of what you can do with this driver. Uh, everything being plug and play. I will have to splice nothing. I will have to uh, crimp nothing, run no wires, do anything like that. Uh, it's all very simple, very plug and play. So I've got eight wires. All, or eight halos all plugged up to the same controller. I need to see basic function. Uh, we've got our DRL wire here. I will run. So there's your startup animation. Uh, and you can see it just does it all uniformly. Everything running the same. Go to our turn signals. 
And that turn signal is uh, one for one side of the car, one for the other. So you see I disconnected one side. Turn it off, and it goes right back to your DRLs. Uh, and then, of course, your strobe brakes. And your reverse. In addition, obviously, you do have the standard show modes as well. So you can show it off. So it does give you quite a bit of versatility, uh, the amount of halos that you can plug up. Quite a few. Uh, we have halo strips, uh, side emitting strips, if you want uh, something in a tube um, that's a little bit more flexible. Uh, we've got the SK6813s in tubes as well. Uh, so quite a list of options. Uh, once again, these are compatible with 5 volt RGBW LEDs. Uh, pretty much anything that we sell that's 5 volt RGBW. Uh, so to be the 60 uh, SK6812 RGBW LEDs as well as the SK6805 side emitting uh, RGBW LEDs will be compatible with these. Uh, not compatible with uh, our UCS lineup at this time, uh, or at least anything 12 volt in our UCS. Our, our UCS pods would be compatible, uh, being that they are 5 volt. Uh, but it is not compatible with 12 volt, uh, and that is simply because the, the plug and play aspect of this does incorporate a 5 volt. So, um, on a technical side, if you are a little more familiar with electrical, you can run UCS with this setup but you will have to run a separate 12 volt to that UCS. I have other videos going over that. If you want to get a little bit more involved in your build, you can uh, you can follow some of those videos, uh, which will show you how to mix 12 and five volt. And that is that will work with this controller, um, but plug and play, which is the main point of this controller, uh, it will not do anything 12 volt. It's only going to push the five volt, 12 volt stuff. It just won't light up. Uh, it's not enough power coming from the five volt side. So, Definitely something to consider. Um, hopefully it's just something uh, that makes uh, install a little bit easier for the Halos. I know that's something, uh, the main reason why we invested uh, a good deal of money to get these made. We wanted something that was a little bit uh, of a cross between a really basic SP controller and the top of the line Ghost controller, uh, Blue Ghost. We wanted something that kind of uh, was somewhere in between, but really simple to install. Um, so this is far more simple to install and use than what the Ghost is. And it's far more simple and more feature rich than what any of the SP controllers offered. Um, so somewhere in between, um, obviously Ghost still offers a lot more if you're willing to put in the extra effort to make them work. There's a lot more wiring and things like that. But if you are looking at trying to do uh, maybe your first kit install, your first Halo install, um, you already got a lot on your plate, opening up lights and everything else that's involved. This is going to make your life a lot easier for your first build. Uh, second build, you know, third build, look into the Ghost. Blue Ghost is, is very nice, but it is a lot more technical. Um, so, main focus on these is for the DIY guy, the guy that just really wants to have an easy install, um, easy plug and play. Uh, the only thing you really got to worry about is running the wires to the location on the car. You will have to find your brakes uh, wire, find your DRL wire. If uh, it is a taillight setup, something to consider. There are a lot of cars that use the same wire for the brake and the turn, and you will have to get a uh, three to one, uh, three, uh, two to three wire brake converter. Uh, Kurt makes one. I think there is another company that makes one as well. Um, actually, we might. Do I have one? But yeah, I've got one right here. Actually, this one's a little bit cheaper. It's called a Red Wolf uh, two to one. Two to it's a it's a two to three trailer brake adapter basically, but it works on a car. You can put it on there, and it's got uh, two wires going in, which would be the uh, right side and left side and then it can actually put three wires out which would be your right side left side turn and then one single brake 
and that would work as far as taillights go. Headlights, they don't do that, so you, you won't have to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, keep in mind, hyperflash resistors would be needed if you are eliminating a turn signal bulb, like if it's a halogen bulb, uh, and you're eliminating that to put these in, you will need it. In the event that you are maintaining all halogen turn signal bulbs in your car, uh, you will not have to worry about hyperflash resistors. So uh, just a couple little things to keep in mind. Um, I do plan on trying to do a couple build videos showing really basic stuff, maybe a projector, uh, a halo kit like this uh, installed in some different headlights. So uh, definitely subscribe uh, and stay tuned for some of those videos to uh, you know, possibly even see your car done uh, by me in the shop here. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, this, these kits are available on the site. Uh, it's $90 for the headlight version and $100 for the taillight version, uh, being that the taillight version does have a little bit extra uh, circuitry inside of that controller. Um, we try to keep everything as simple as we could as far as uh, everything is waterproof. Everything is ready to go. Uh, one thing that you can consider, uh, you don't have to do this, but it will, uh, long run, it, it will help potentially with moisture and other things like that, depending on your climate. You can put dielectric grease in between the plugs. So any of these JST plugs that you see, uh, if you just put some uh, dielectric grease inside of the plug before you put them together, it will prevent moisture from getting inside. Um, so that is something you can consider. You don't have to do it, but uh, just a little tip of something that might help in the long run avoid any moisture issues depending on your climate, depending on where you live, depending on how humid it is in the air. Uh, corrosion can happen to those uh, internal connections and dielectric grease can help avoid that. Um, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will try to answer any questions that I can. Best way to contact us is through our Instagram or Facebook page or directly on the website, which will actually lead you to the Facebook page. Um, uh, in general, that's the best way to contact us. You can also contact us by email uh, at support at nextlevelneo.com. Uh, thanks again.